Mantras, mudras, and meditation. These are three tools that have specific descriptions in some spiritual practices, but which I think apply to all spiritual practices, or at least most of them. Let's start with mantras. So mantras in the spiritual practices in many parts of India is where you're using sonic energy and sonic tools through your vocalizations and your energies to connect with the divine to bring about certain effects. One of the key aspects of mantras as I have studied so far is that it's not simply saying something with great gusto or fervor, but one key distinction with mantras is that you have to genuinely believe in a specific divine entity. You have to specifically to believe in a specific divine entity. And so I think mantras are pretty powerful, but mantras are not unlike prayers. They're not unlike prayers. And so the science of mantras can be applied to prayers in general. In one of the books that I've read about mantras by Om Swami, it talks about the use of the the Om sound, as in Om. And while there are some who may connect that with mantras, it's not what is what they're talking about. They are saying that you need to have a specific God, a specific divine being that is connected to your mantra. And in most cases, the universal Om does not cut it. And so that's a decision you'd have to make if you were to follow that specific practice of mantras. And I'm not advocating for or against you connecting with a specific divine entity. What I would say is that regardless of your motives, understanding the science of mantras is very useful. And what I take away from all of that is it's about your energy and what you bring to it. I've watched a lot of videos by um, Brother Youssef, whose channel is called New Life Tools, N-U-L-I-F-E, or is it L-Y-F-E? New Life Tools, that's his channel, Bro, Bro Youssef is how he, how he says it, B-R-O and then Y-O-S-E-F. And one thing that I've seen in his videos when I read between the lines is that he refers to thought forms. And thought forms is where you think about something so hard, so intent, that you give it reality. So what that means is that there are divine beings. They do exist. And there are um, other beings. Some would call them extraterrestrials whatever you want to say, there's a wide number of beings in this vast multiverse, in this, bat, in this vast omniverse. There's a multitude of beings. But some beings did not exist until human beings created them with their thoughts and energy. What that means is that thousands of years ago, let's say that someone started putting out the word on a certain divine entity that actually didn't exist. But then over time, as hundreds and then thousands and millions and billions of people on the earth started believing so hard in that being that they gave that being form, 
life, and it took a life of its own. Brother Yusef talks about this in a much more detailed way than I will cover here. But what that means for when you're praying and when you are manifesting and when you are believing is that if it's really in your heart and there are no short, short circuits in your subconscious because you may think you believe something, you may think you want something, but somewhere in the back of your mind, you're like, oh no, that's not the truth. That's not really what you want. And it's true. It's like, you might want to be wealthy, but somewhere in the back of your mind, you are afraid of wealth. You are afraid of success. And so deep down, you've taken on some programming somewhere along the line where you short circuit yourself. So when you are doing mantras or applying the science of mantras to your own um, prayers, manifestation statements, affirmations, or just straight out mantras in the form that they take from uh, India and other practices like Buddhism, then you best better bring your best energy, your best focused, your best intent. And you need to decide beforehand, or at least do the work, work on yourself, to figure out what are the blockages within you. Mudras. So this, for example, is the mudra of wisdom, the mudra of wisdom. And, you know, mudras are hand movements that you use and they help channel energy and they help bring about certain effects in your life. Um, the most famous hand gesture you've probably seen is the one from uh, Dr. Spock or Leonard Nimoy's character um, Spock in the Star Trek series, right? And many think that his gesture here where he says live long and prosper is a mudra. And it probably is. I, I think I read somewhere where it might be an actual mudra. But he said he got it from watching um, priests of Ko Kohen Kohenim um, from the uh, Aaronic order, uh, Levitical priests, that they do the gestures like this and they bless during their ceremony, right? And so mudras take various forms. And this is a very famous one that exists in many spiritual traditions and many cultures. Um, in the, um, the practices in India, um, some call this the mudra of prayer. It may be known by other names, but it unites heaven and earth. And it also is the process of bringing about infinity in Tai Chi, I believe, yes. In Tai Chi, you bring about infinity. And so, yin and yang. And then you have mudras like this, right? How many of us have just sat down like this? So we do mudras all the time and are unaware of it just by how we hold our hands, you know. This is a very famous one in Japan. I believe it's the a mudra of uh, power. Um, but anyway, in ordinary practice, when you have your hands interlocked like this, you are creating greater concentration and greater focus, right? And so um, these mudras can be very effective ways of, um, it's, it's hand, hand yoga. They're very effective ways of bringing about energy and directing your energy in a certain in a certain way. And then you have meditations. And so when we think about meditations, we usually conjure this image of our eyes closed. And I do this a lot. And where you're able to empty your mind. And I, I can have an empty mind. I have one now. No images, no pictures, nothing. Just words coming out. It took a lot of practice. But 
no thought, just utter nothing, utter darkness. It takes a lot of practice to do that. But there are more active meditations where you have tools and you take these tools and you focus. You focus on the sound and how that sound represents the frequencies of the universe, the frequencies of your surroundings, the frequencies within you. And then there are the meditations, some of which were uh, made famous by people like uh, Thich Nhat Hanh of Vietnam. Thich Nhat Hanh passed away earlier this year, and I enjoyed uh, reading his material and watching some of his videos. Um, he's very, very um, powerful speaker, and he um, believed in the meditations through breath. I do agree with Sadhguru that meditation itself does not really mean anything uh, as a word and that you can see a richer vocabulary around meditation in the Eastern world. And so I do use the word meditation and I do think about that, but I am aware that when meditation is spoken about in the East, it is spoken about in a multi-layered way. That is to say, um, when I think of spirituality, I think that there are attempts to simplify it at times, but I think we mustn't run away from complexity, that simplicity and complexity coincide, coexist. And so there are multiple layers, depending on your vantage point, you can see simplicity and you can see complexity, it depends on your point of view. And in meditation, you can have the active and the inactive coincide. So that is mantras, mudras, and meditation. And I have a mantra that I've worked on that I will read out to you here. I am greater than fear. Fear will never dominate me. I will not allow fear to induce me to self-sabotage or erode my etheric being. I rise above fear and assert the supreme dominance of my highest self to perpetuate my highest self-love. Grief should always be brief. I take the moment of grief to reflect the grow the intelligence of my heart. I will not imprison myself in grief. Apathy is never my natural condition, and I seek evolution. I recognize apathy as a mental prison, rejecting the thirst to build a better situation. I do not surrender to apathy. Guilt shows me the truth for a limited time. Feeding on guilt beyond its expiration date traps us into long-term self-punishment. I use guilt to grow into a better person. I am an infinite meditative power and supreme elder soul. I will perfect lower dimensional human energy fields into absolute alignment with my highest self. My spirit eternally seeks transcendent dominion over consciousness and the source of elemental power. Self-love is the foundation to properly love others. I will increase my capacity for self-love. I will have a mind free of intellectual and emotional toxins and dysfunctional patterns. I continually learn from God, higher character, right thought, right action, perpetual right spirit. I am grateful to exist, grateful for my life, grateful for my family, true friends, allies, and spiritual team. I am eternally grateful to my ancestors for assuring my legacy, 
destiny and greater transformation. I am worthy. I am successful. I am valuable. I am desirable. I am destined for greater success. So that is a common everyday mantra that you can read in the mornings, the afternoon, the evenings, or all three. And then you have not only a mantra like that that you can develop your own, right? But you can also have mantras for very special days. And on special days, I like to say, I seek to remember myself and my primordial existence. I venerate and am grateful to the primordial prime creator who is the true source of light out of darkness, order out of chaos, and the one who generates the soul, essence, consciousness, and experience. I venerate and am grateful to all my dragons and all dragons of primordial creation who protect, teach, and enhance my spirit, soul, energy, and consciousness and power. I venerate and appreciate the prime primordial leaders of creation who in alignment with the prime primordial creator works to my highest evolution and ascension. I love my ultimate soul, my chief and prime self at the highest plane of existence nearest the greatest concentration of the prime primordial creator's essence and seek to always know my original thoughts and goals character and essence. In this third dimension, part of my soul and spirit inhabit, and to the great powers of this dimension until the seventh dimensions, I seek understanding and violence. I seek to evolve beyond these dimensions with the assistance of the great primordial powers and ascended masters and my spiritual parents and spiritual ancestors. I seek to manifest durable high power, perfect will, the highest frequency and vibration associated with benevolence and prosperity in my soul, spirit, and being. I want to wake up and experience my full being alive wherever I live and exist. I want to walk awake and sleep fully aware with omniconsciousness in all worlds I pervade. I acknowledge where I am in this temporal existence and experience. I respect all spirits and powers, whether good or evil, as well as all spirits that transcend polarity. I am thankful to the spirit of the city I am in now and the greater land that encompass this space. I do not embrace fear, but seek to live in my soul and spirit at the highest frequency and vibration. I do not give my energy as food or substance to any other, but can claim my power in being in full. Where I stand, I am a divine being filled with the entirety of primordial power and majesty. I am here through spiritual choice to participate in the prime creator's designs and to evolve. I live here in collaboration with my spiritual ancestors blood ancestors, the great powers, ascended masters, and the prime creator from the primordial cause of all existence to evolve ourselves and help manifest a greater creation, understanding, understanding, and projection of souls, spirits, and beings. As I said, that is a statement for special days, be it eclipses, full moons, new moons, um, alignment of constellations, you name it. And so it is important to assert who we are in our spirit, to assert what our destiny is, to connect and try to remember. I won't belabor that point because like I say, there are videos that go into depth on that in far greater detail. And so I thank you for listening. I thank you for hearing. And I hope that all goes well with myself, with you, and with all of us. Thank you.